looking through my walnut to find the best boards that would make a tabletop. I was looking for ones that were the clearest, that didn't have any knots in them. The ones I found were 12 feet long, so I had to find the middle, 6 feet, and cut it down the middle. I then had to cut my boards to 6 inches wide, as they wouldn't fit across my jointer otherwise. Now one of the downsides of having a single 15 amp line in my garage is that my table saw would trip the breaker, and it did this a lot, uh, cutting those boards, which got really annoying. Then I ran all the boards across my jointer. And then I ran all the boards through my planer. And all this planing created a lot of sawdust. I ended up filling up this entire bag and then half of another one. <laughs> Then I went through and matched, tried to match all the boards up as best I could with grain direction. At, at this point I had actually upgraded uh, table saws and, and this one was just a 13 amp motor so it didn't trip my breaker nearly as much as the other one. Anyways, I had gone through and cut the edge on the other side of all the boards so that they would mate up and not leave any gaps. And once I had them all laid out, I went through and marked different spots uh, for biscuit joiner. This is actually the first time I used biscuit joiners, and I'd s seen online that you could do biscuits about every six inches, which is what I did, but in hindsight, I probably could have spaced them out a little bit more as there it felt like there was a million biscuits I put in this thing and they're not there for any structural integrity it's just to keep the boards flat and aligned and I, and I felt like I was in a mad dash to get all three million of these biscuits in before the glue dried so Lesson learned there. I think I could probably use less next time. Then I left it clamped up overnight. And I went through and cleaned up all the excess glue that I couldn't reach with the clamps. And I roughly sanded the top and the bottom with 80 grit just to get it kind of smooth. And then I went and cut the ends off to make it square. And I actually found out with this cheap circular saw that its guide was not square to its blade and there was no way to adjust it so my cut was not actually perfectly straight to my line so I ended up getting a uh, different circular saw for the rest of the project then I marked out my tenons and then I used I guess it's called a, a dado bit for my router and this worked pretty well I was a little hesitant in how it was going to work but oh, other than getting the cord stuck on my clamp. It went pretty well. And then I quickly found out where not to put my camera. This literally shot dust directly into the lens. And then I went through and cut off the ends. And for this design, I was going to have three individual tenons across the width of the table. So this is what I'm doing here, just cutting it out. And then my <laughs> coping saw in the middle of this broke, as you'll see here. And, and I couldn't find any more blades, so I kind of had to go through and just wing it with some of my saws. And it worked out okay, but it was kind of a pain.
And I got a couple boards to make my breadboards with. And I cut them down to the right width. And I jointed them as well, and then I planed them down to the thickness that would be the tabletop. And for this mortise, I started in it doing it this way, where I used an up-down bit and took a bunch of passes. But as I got deeper, I found it got really hard to kind of control and got squirrely. And I have little incidences like this right here, where it would tag the side of the wall. It ended up being anything that was too bad, but for the second one, I just drilled it out with a Forstner bit and then cleaned it up with a chisel, and, and that worked pretty well. And then I cut the ends to length. You can kind of see on this one that the couple marks where the up-down bit got out of my hand with the router. But it was nothing that you couldn't use. And then it slides on. And the top is roughly together. Now I'm starting on the legs and I had some eight quarter walnut or two inches thick walnut and I cut the edges off and I had to plane the edges so that I would have a flat surface to run across the fence so that I could cut them in half. And this piece was actually bowed a bit so it kind of stalled out in the middle so I waited and stopped and turned it around and cut from the other end. And that, and that did the trick. And I jointed those. Then I also cut some maple to length. And then cut them to about two inches wide strips. And I planed the walnut boards and the maple boards. And since I didn't have any eight quarter maple, I had to laminate them together. And the idea being that it would have a maple strip down the center of this leg. It's kind of an accent piece, really. And then I cut the maple strips into pieces. So when I put it together, it would leave a nice clean mortise for the stretcher. It's actually something I learned from Mark over at the Wood Whisperer. And after it was glued up, I put it through the planer again to get it nice and smooth and flat. You can kind of see how this is going to come together. And next I needed to make the feet for the legs. Uh, these boards were a little too cupped to run across my table saw, so I cut them on the bandsaw. And that worked pretty well. And I jointed all of those. And then I planed them all to roughly the same thickness. They didn't have to be exactly the same, but the closer the better. And then I went through and tried to match them up as best as I could in groups of three. I needed four of these, so I had 12 boards. So I just tried to find colors that match close in grain. Once I had figured that out, I glued them all up in pairs of three. And once they had dried, I jointed and planed them so that they were nice and smooth like you see here. And then I went through with the drill press and cut out the mortises. And then cleaned up the mortises with my chisel.
next I cut a angle off on all of the feet. Now you can kind of see how it's coming together. Next thing I needed to do was cut the bottoms out. That way the, the feet would have four individual points of contact with the floor, not just one big one. So that's what I'm doing here. Then I took 80 grit sandpaper and roughly sanded the edges to get them smooth. And then I took a round over bit across all the edges to take the sharp edge off. Next up I needed to make the tenons on the legs themselves to fit into the feet. And here I'm taking basically a test cut, proud of my lines, and then I'll try and fit it and adjust it accordingly. It actually be, ended up being pretty close uh, where I cut it here, so I didn't have to adjust it too much. And these edges got the round over treatment as well. I didn't want to have any sharp edges down where people could potentially be barefoot and kick something. Here you can see all the feet. And I'm doing a final sanding, getting everything nice and smooth. And you can see here I have tenons uh, on the top and bottom of the legs. And that's for the feet on the bottom and I don't know what you'd call them for the top. The arms that actually attach to the tabletop itself and holds it up. And then I had to glue up the tenons once I knew that everything fit together like it should. Then I can set those aside to dry. Next I needed to make the stretcher that would go between the legs. And I didn't have any boards that were thick enough so I had to laminate four of these boards together to get the board that I wanted. So after jointing them and then planing them all smooth. I glued them all up and made one massive board. I was a little hesitant about sticking it through this planer because it barely fit and this was extremely heavy. I was kind of worried about it tipping one way or the other, but it ended up working out just fine. Then I made some cuts on my bandsaw to make the tenons for the stretcher. And I cut these proud of my line so that 
I could, in theory, work it down to size to fit perfectly into the pre-made mortises I had made. And this was actually the very first fitting after I just cut it on the bandsaw. And it was almost the perfect fit, so I got extremely lucky. I had to, I ended up only having to sand it to get it to fit. But I got, I definitely got lucky. And then I needed to make the mortises at the ends of the tenons to make take the wedges. So I just drill them out with a Forstner bit from both sides. And then cleaned it up with a chisel. And then I made a couple of wedges that you put through the mortise. And this makes everything taut. And it also allows me to take them out if I need to disassemble this table whenever we move. At this point, I was at the home stretch, so I just had to do a lot of sanding. And I mean a lot of sanding. Then before the final grit, I went through and put a round over around the edge on both the top and bottom to take off the sharp edge. And then it was time for the polyurethane. I didn't stain it or anything, I just wanted to keep the natural color. So I put several coats of semi-gloss polyurethane. The legs in the stretcher got the same treatment, but I'm not showing that here. This was hands down the most nerve-wracking part of the whole build because I'm about ready to drill a hole for the bolts and you definitely don't want to go too far and drill through the top of the table. So I had my tape on there to make sure I didn't go too deep and double, triple checked it against the edge of the table to make sure it wasn't going to go through it. Then I hand tapped very carefully the holes so that they would take a bolt and hold the tabletop to the legs. And it worked okay. I had actually done some test pieces on a scrap piece of wood and I had a couple mishaps so I was a little nervous about doing it but it worked out okay. And it's done in, in our dining room. It was a lot of work but I'm really happy how it turned out. <laughs>